Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do in this video is share with you probably the most common problem that you're gonna have trying to engage spotlight mode. But I thought what I better do first is just cover some of the basics. So you can hear the drone. Um, I've got the, the, gro the, <laughs> the, gro the drone just off to camera right here. It's already up in the air. And what I'm gonna do is engage spotlight mode with you and just give you some examples of what you're gonna see and what you need to look out for. Okay, so there's yours truly. We'll draw a box, takes a second, and now you can see that if I move to the left, or if I move to the right, I'm being tracked by the drone. I can increase the height. I can go to the right or to the left, it doesn't really matter the drone is gonna follow me. And that's the basics of spotlight mode. Just imagine you've got one of those big heavy duty flashlights and you're shining a uh, flashlight on the individual or whatever the target is. And it's basically going to spotlight you no matter where you move. And so that's the first or the basic idea of spotlight mode. So let's bring the drone down a little bit here. And what I'm gonna do now is turn that mode off now let's say uh, we want to target something here. So I'm just going to turn the drone. We'll fly it down a little ways here. Now let's put it up a little bit. And I'm just going to bring it back a little bit right there. And I'm gonna try and target just an open area in the grass. I'm gonna draw a box. Spotlight mode has come on, and now I'm gonna try and engage the teardrop so that we can target that little area on the grass. Okay, I got really, really lucky. I guess there's enough contrast between the dead grass and the not so dead grass that spotlight mode engaged. But later in the video, you're gonna see a really clear example where I was flying the drone and I tried to engage it um, over a clump of trees and I couldn't get it to engage. And the reason was because there's not enough contrast. So you have to have a substantial amount of contrast for the drone to differentiate and bring up the teardrop or the focus point so you can move the drone around that focus point. So now that we've got our target selected, now I'm gonna take the drone up a little bit. Okay, I've got her up at about 30 meters and you can see now that if I move the joystick, I'm gonna move it back. And basically what the drone is doing is it's just doing a 360 around the main focal point. So here's what we need to do if you're having trouble engaging the drone or engaging spotlight mode. So let's bring it down. You'll see this later in the video, but I'll show you uh, again here, is take the drone over to an area where you've got high contrast. So now if I draw a box there, spotlight mode comes up, and then if I jog to the right or to the left, it picks up spotlight mode or the, the uh, pinpoint focus uh, pretty quick. So just look for something that's got high contrast between dark and light colors and you'll be off to the races. So the next mode that we wanna look at is point of interest. So let's do that. Okay, and I'm gonna draw a box around myself. And this time, So 
So now what's happening is point of interest is engaged. And I just want to get some height here so I don't smack any trees. And so we've reached our max height for the point of interest to track me, but it doesn't matter where I go now, the drone is going to fly around me in a circle and it's going to track me. But there's a height limitation to it. And we're at 32 meters right now. So this is a really cool, useful feature as well. It doesn't matter where you move. Once you engage the track mode, the drone is going to follow you, which is really cool because you don't have to do anything. You can just be standing wherever and have hands free and the drone is tracking me, which is kind of cool. So if you want to track yourself on a bicycle or a motorcycle or car or something like that, you'd have no problem doing it. You just have a height limitation uh, that you have to keep in mind. To disengage, we just hit the stop. Okay, and we're back to, we'll tap the X icon there. And now we've got point of interest uh, disengaged. Pretty straightforward. Okay, for point of interest, there's two, there's really two ways to use it. And I'm gonna do a location first. I'm just gonna draw a box here. And I'm going to touch on point of interest. Try not to turn off the recording and I'll hit go. And what you'll notice now is that the drone is going to rotate around whatever point of interest that you've selected. And you can increase the speed a little bit if you need to. And the nice thing about this mode is that you can have complete hands-free operation. So now I'm going to hit the X here and we'll turn that off. Okay guys, so one last thing I thought I'd share with you and that is the ability to do subject tracking. And if you tap the three dots in the top right of the screen and let's see here, we want to go to under control, there it is. And you'll see a white dot where it says subject scanning. And if you just press on that, and now we're gonna go back to our regular uh, view and we'll just fly the drone straight down the street here. And as you can see, the drone is automatically picking up different things that it thinks that it can track, whether it be people, in this case, it's mostly cars. But it's kind of a cool uh, feature to have, uh, definitely a great tool uh, to be able to use a uh, feature like this. Hey guys, just a quick note about the subject scanning section. You'll notice that I blurred out the vehicles and I do that because of people's privacy. I think as someone creating tutorial videos, I've got an obligation to be respectful to people's privacy. And so that's the reason for it. But that said, subject scanning is one wicked powerful tool for creating great drone video take advantage of it. It's, it's simple to engage. Just remember that the drone has to be airborne. Um, otherwise, the option will be grayed out. Okay guys, so in this video, what I'm gonna do, last night I was flying and I was having trouble getting spotlight mode engaged. And so I'm gonna see if I can solve that problem and I'm gonna share the problem with you. I'll share the solution with you for sure. Uh, so let's give it a shot, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Okay, so it's about like 8 o'clock in the morning. It's dead calm, so that should help. And now let's take our drone up and we'll see what we can do here. Let's 
gonna stop here 16 meters so that's 18 that's about 50 60 feet that tree so that's just off my backyard I'm gonna take the drone up to about 50 meters which is what I usually do that's 53 that voice is my granddaughter. She's decided to go back in the house. Excuse me for a moment. There you go, sweetie. Okay, the nice thing about the drone, or the <laughs> Mini 3 Pro, is when you get interrupted like that, just take your fingers off the joysticks and everything's good. Okay. So, let's see, last night I was actually trying to target a spot where there wasn't a lot of contrast in the object, like this one here. And so, I'm going to draw a box, so I've drawn a box around the trees, and then I'm just going to move the joystick. And I noticed that spotlight mode's not engaging. So I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to point the drone to something that has a lot more contrast, like that blue and white building. And let's see. Now let's see if we can get spotlight mode to engage. That's interesting. There it is, so spotlight mode is engaged. So what I'm trying to show you is that when you, you're trying to engage spotlight mode and it's not working for you, it's likely because you don't have enough contrast in the object. And so just pick something that is, uh, has high contrast in it and you'll find spotlight mode engages fairly easily. So now what I can do is I'm going to bring the drone back a little bit. So I'm still at roughly 55 meters, or 50 meters, and what I'm going to do now I can just uh, fly a nice 360 around the blue and white building and you'll get a nice uh, panorama of where I live. <laughs> Now if I use my left joystick, I can bring the camera down. I, I always tend to follow the rule of thirds, like I have a third of the sky shown and then two thirds of the landscape, which seems to be about the best. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And I'm just doing a fairly slow flight uh, in this arc, or in this 360. Not sure what the weather's supposed to be today, but it's pretty warm out right now. So, But the, the drone is flying effortlessly uh, in this pattern, so... Now another thing that you can do, if you use your right uh, dial and you want to zoom in on an object, like so, and then just continue your uh, flight pattern. 
you're looking for a little more close-up view of your town or whatever your point of interest is. Now, because the controller is actually flying the drone or flying the drone, it's it's kind of like an automatic mode. And so, if I want to take the drone up a little higher, I can do that. Image transition signal may be blocked. Position remote controller to face the aircraft and adjust antennas for optimal strength or fly at a higher altitude. So we'll try a little higher altitude. So those are all air messages you might get and it wouldn't surprise me if it's coming from that 60 foot tree that's right in front of me there. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take off the spotlight mode I'm going to try to take off the spotlight mode. There it is. It's off. And now, image transition signal is weak. So let's see. Yeah, so I think what this is, I'm going to have to get away from this tree. So I'm just going to move out the front of my house and see if I can pick up the signal a little better and I'll bring the drone back to me. Okay, so I'm just marching out to the front of the house here. drone seems to be hovering just fine and I think this should solve my problem there we go so there's a couple of really good examples for you as to you know some problem issues you might run into as far as transition signal goes and So I think now I should be able to return to the backyard and be able to bring the drone back exactly where I took it off. Okay, so we're back where we started. And let's bring our camera down so I can see where I'm over top of. So I'm actually out over these houses. There we go. There's yours, Turley's house. There's our little green landing pad in the backyard. Let me just turn the drone a little bit. So you can see that where I'm going to bring the drone down is a pretty tight spot. I've got this giant 50, 60 foot tree over here. I've got two apple trees. There's more trees here. So you really want to be careful. You don't want to be doing this on a windy day for sure. <laughs> okay, let's bring her down. You guys should be able to hear the drone buzzing coming down. So 
drone's like almost straight out there now. Just bring it down. And I should be able to park it right there where it took off. There we go. Okay guys, so I hope that helps you solve a problem with spotlight mode. Just remember, you have to have a certain amount of contrast. Uh, so if you're flying in low light, you know, like uh, could be sunset or anything that's gonna interrupt the transmission, um, just look for something that's got a high contrast and you'll be able to engage spotlight mode, no problem. Okay guys, so for a Sunday afternoon dumb stunt, uh, we decided to attempt to fly our drone through that uh, small opening in the oak tree that you can see there. And uh, we had to make a few small adjustments to the settings first. So I'm going to do that. Stick around. You'll see the end result. I think you'll find it interesting. So we're making the usual settings here. We'll confirm the, instead of return to home, it's going to be put in hover mode. And uh, under control and gain and expo tuning. And we want to make sure that the drone's in cine mode. That'll smooth things out and help the situation a little bit. And then we can get on with our flight. Okay guys, so the my mother-in-law, the owner of the farm, she's given me her exalted permission to try and fly through that hole in the oak tree there. So either I'm going to crash and look like a fool. Yeah, they're having a good laugh. <laughs> so let's put the drone up. We'll see if we can do it. I heard it. I trimmed the leaves off of the... I heard that. Oh my god. <laughs> you trying to make the hole bigger? That's it. In the house. Careful, you're gonna scare all my YouTuber fans, eh? Oh, we're YouTube. Oh. <laughs> okay, folks, so now that the comedy hour is over, uh, this was a little bit longer video. I tried to give you some real world scenarios and certainly give you as much basic information as I can about spotlight mode and point of interest and how to use it and what to look for. And certainly subject scanning was kind of interesting. Uh, so I hope you found some value in the video. If you did, hit the subscribe, like, and notification bells for me. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for tuning into these uh, drone videos. I'm really enjoying making them. And that's it for this one, guys. I will see you in the next one.